All right, here's another question with the two-point Arrhenius equation. Instead of asking you to calculate the activation energy, I'm going to give you the activation energy and some other data and ask you to calculate a temperature. So let's take a look. I give you a rate constant, so let's call it K1. I give you another rate constant, let's call that K2. And so I give you a temperature that'll go with that first rate constant, we'll call it T1. And I also give you the activation energy. And it's actually just asking you to calculate the temperature associated with T2. Now, it doesn't actually matter what you call T1 and what you call K1 and what you call K2 and T2, as long as the two, as long as the temperature and the rate constant go together. You could we could have eas easily called the yellow ones K2 and the green ones K1 you're going to get the same answer either way. It is the way that we've got it this way, so let's go ahead and move forward with the problem. But from this point, it really is just kind of like uh, turn the crank and fill in the blanks. So I'm going to put my two rate constants there, K1, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fifth, K2, 2.4 times 10 to the negative three. My activation energy needs to be converted to joules because that's the formula, that's the unit of the gas constant. So joules per mole for the for the activation energy. And then the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Now let's go ahead and get this parentheses worked out. It's T2 that we're looking for. And so I have to convert T1 to Kelvin. So that's 308 Kelvin. All right, so let's go ahead and do the natural log of the ratio. I get 0 0.0275 for the ratio, and I get 12,990 Kelvin for the uh, activation energy divided by the gas constant. Now I'm going to carry all this parentheses along with me before I simplify again. So simplifying a little bit more, I get the natural log of this value is minus 3.5936. And I'm going to go ahead and carry along the right side of the equation. Now let's go ahead and distribute the 12,990K through the parentheses. So on the right side, I get 12,990K over T2 minus 42.5479. And that unit, that number becomes units. And that's important because when we add 42.1547.9 to both sides, it needs to be unitless because the unit, the number on the left side is also unitless. So let's go ahead and do that. We get 38.5612 equals 12,990 Kelvin over T2. Multiplying both sides by T2, then dividing by 38.5612, we get T2 equals 336.9 Kelvin. And that's the final temperature.